Hey, what's up guys, how we doing? Um, so today we're gonna look a little bit at base running from third base. We're gonna look specifically at the contact play. Um, there's a lot of questions I've received regarding base running at third base, how to take a lead. Um, and so I thought I'd combine everything kind of together and talk about our leads and then also the contact play because it's an important play and usually the play is gonna be put on when it's a close game, sometimes late in the game, um, and it can really determine a ball game. So. There's guys that do it really well, and there's guys that probably don't do it so well. Um, and that little bit of not doing it so well will make you out of the plate instead of safe. It can lose your team the ball game. So let's look at it real quick. Um, usually going to put a contact play on when there's one out, usually no outs. If the infield comes in, you'll see the ball through um, because you have another chance to, to score on. You actually have two more chances. Um, with one out, typically you'll see the contact play put on. So the infield's playing in basically right when contact is made, you're going to, um, try to score. So let's look at it first. Okay. So let's break it down now. Um, so again, Typically, one out, infield is playing in. Um, you're going to put the contact play on, and this is how um, I think is the best way to do it, at least the way that I've done it. Basically, at every all five of my teams that I played for in professional baseball ran the contact play the same way. So um, what you want to do in your lead, when you start to take your secondary lead, there's, two, there's really two ways to do it. You can go right, left, right or you can go left, right, shuffle. Those are the two ways that I usually do it. I like the left, right, shuffle. In this video, you see he goes right, left, right. He's got a little bit of a, he's got like a baby shuffle there at the end. But bottom line is, no matter how you do it, you want your right foot to be landing as the ball's crossing the hitting zone. That's the general rule. So the right foot's down as the ball's crossing the hitting zone. Once he sees contact, bang, he crosses over with his left foot and he's off. So you're putting pressure on the defense, and you can see here, if the ball's not hit right at an infielder, it's really hard to get the runner at home plate. I think that's Vernon Wells running, maybe. It looks like Vernon Wells. Um, so uh, if you have, even if you have average speed, you don't have to have great speed. If you land on your right foot as the ball's crossing the plate, and you anticipate contact, and you see that contact and break on contact, well, then there's a good chance that unless the ball's hit right at an infielder, I mean, that's, I don't know who that is out there. Texas, probably Ann Kinsler. Um, you know, he gets rid of that ball pretty quickly. And Wells still beats it home um, because he got a really good break and he's got his right foot down at contact. Now, a couple things uh, with the contact play. Uh, when we would run it, the third base coach is basically putting everything, he's taking everything out of the runner's hands and he's putting it on himself. Um, so, the way we would do it is when your right foot lands and you're anticipating contact and you see contact, you don't wait to see, is this ball on the ground? Is this ball a line grab at an infield? Or is this ball a fly ball? Basically, um, right when contact's about to be made, you anticipate contact. Once you see contact, bang, you cross over hard right here. So you right foot down, you anticipate contact, excuse me, left foot crossing over hard. Now, if it's a line shot at an infielder, well, then that's a chance you're willing to take. If they catch it and they're able to double you off, then that's not your fault. If it's a fly ball and you cross over hard here and bang, and it's a, it's a fly ball the outfield, well, then you slam on the brakes right here. You get back. You try to get back quickly, tag and go. Um, so that's the idea of the contact play. Now, at different levels, maybe at younger levels, your coach might say, hey, on the ground, we're going to go. On the air, you got to get back and tag. Now, the problem with that is if it's a play like this, the, the reason the contact play works well is because at a young level, if you're trying to read, okay, is it a line drive and I got to freeze? Is it a ground ball and I got to go? Is it a pop fly and I got to get back? Well, then you're a step slow. So you, you probably won't make it. In order for these plays to work, especially as you get a little bit older, you have to have a contact play where you're basically anticipating contact and breaking on contact. Because if you read it, well then, if, if he tried to read this a little bit more and wasn't off so quickly, bang, ball's hit, I'm gone. He's probably thrown out here. He's definitely thrown out here. He barely makes it. Um, and he was off at the second contact was made. There was no, um, you know, is this ball a line drive, you know, back at the third baseman or something like that. He saw contact and he's off. So that's really the way the contact play, play is, is used as you get older. 
Um, so again, keys to the contact play. Right foot's got to be down at contact. Or excuse me, as the ball's crossing home plate, right foot's got to be down. See contact, hard crossover with the left foot, and go. Don't dive head first in the home. Always slide feet first um, so you don't get hurt. And the biggest thing is to anticipate contact. If it's a line shot right back at the pitcher and you get doubled off, well, it's not your fault. As long as it's a contact play. Now, if, you're, if your coach tells you otherwise, well, then, you know, you might not score. You probably get thrown out here, but you don't get doubled off. But um, usually, coach puts a contact play on. This is the way we're going to do it. So just something interesting. I don't know how you guys do it out there. I just wanted to, you know, I've gotten a lot of questions on it. This is the way that you'll see it done in Major League Baseball and professional baseball and at certain colleges that use it. Um, so I thought it was an interesting play. One more point we can make for any of you infielders watching this is um, – because it's kind of a cool shot. Watch how the infielders here, the middle infielders, watch how they work together. Watch their footwork, how they, um, they're basically hopping with their thumbs up. So we talk in a lot of our videos about having tennis feet, how you want to be on the balls of your feet at contact when the ball's crossing the hitting zone. You want to be on the balls of your feet. Watch this little hop by both infielders. I don't know if you can see. You know, I don't. It's Kinsler second. I'm guessing Andrews. That's short, maybe. But look at this bang right there. Same exact time. Ball's crossing the hitting zone. Bang. They land. Balls are their feet. They're square. They can move either way. And watch how quickly Kinsler gets off the ball. I mean, I'll play it in regular speed. Or slow motion, but hop. Bang. Go. I mean, nice pick by Brzezinski there, too. But... Um, kind of cool angle to see both the infield, how the infield is preparing their feet, and then the base running um, footwork over at third. All right, guys, so uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I know the contact play, again, is something that not everybody uses, but it's an interesting play, and you'll see it a lot in Major League Baseball, so I thought I'd break it down for you. All right, um, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, comment in the section below, all that good stuff, and we'll talk to you later.